So now I'm sitting here with Klaus Ullmann. You might have heard his name. Klaus, usually you're flying here. Can you tell me a bit more about the weather today and where I should go to uh, with the LS4? Yeah, today we have a, a quite typical situation that we have here in southern France. More or less whole Europe is under cloud cover. And due to the wind situation that we have here, we have a northwestern wind. Today, mistral situation, which is not a real mistral situation, it's especially the wind is in the lower altitudes. In the altitude, in higher altitudes, 5,500 meters, we have still a little bit southwestern wind. So it's not a real wave situation, but we have low level waves, rotor situation. We have thermals at the same time. And this is a quite uh, a fantastic mix uh, to learn about how to fly in the mountains because we have the possibility of bridge soaring, we have little waves as well, and we have this mix up with the thermals. For us in our valley here, that's the Buesch Valley, which is west of the Durance Valley, usually we have a little bit more wind. We saw it in the forecast. If you are going more to the east, the wind is uh, dropping down and there's a more thermal situation. On the other hand, we have a little bit rain shower possibilities, but uh, as we saw in the forecast, we have up to 3,000 meters probably cloud base. Hopefully it's like that. <laughs> forecast is forecast. Uh, we have always uh, to adapt. This is typical southern France weather situation that we have quite often. And it's not to make big distances, but for me it was, uh, when, I, when I started here more than 40 years ago, it was really funny to learn about flying mountains, I learned it here. Because you have wind possibility, you have the thermals, you have convergences, it's, it's, everything is there. And little by little you understand more and more. Which was the first plane that you used here to learn to fly? Uh, I was here at the beginning uh, with my ASW20. And so I made all the experiences, I, the bad experiences <laughs> I could do. I landed in outland kids. I, I had no clue how to fly there. No clue, no, that's not right, because I read a lot of books about flying in the mountains. And that's what I, uh, I would uh, tell to all people who want to fly in the mountain, to read really a maximum of what they can read. There are very good books now, some English books. Martin Dinges has a, a beautiful book about flying in the mountains and to understand how it works. So uh, together with Martin, for example, I learned the theory behind because you make your theory yourself and probably it works, mm -hmm. but the model could be wrong. But it's better <laughs> to fly with a wrong model which works uh, than have, having no model. Okay, exactly. <laughs> so when I came here, I was quite worried that I would be on my own with the LS4 in the flying in the club class. Everyone here has a Ventus or a Discus 2CT or even bigger planes. So you told me that you flew here with an ASW20, which calms me a little because I'm not that lost with the LS4 and I'm going to make small steps in the beginning. I'm going to start with a ridge flight. I'm going to try to catch a wave. You told us about two main locations for wave possibilities. Yeah. Which one would you say is the most probable one? The first thing is uh, usually we are starting in uh, ridge soaring. So we have our Arambra here. And uh, so this is this beautiful mountain here uh, south of our airfield where we make our aerotow. And that is as well always the point where you can recover. Mm -hmm. If ever you try something, it does not work. You should always have a concept uh, to take a point where you can restart and okay, that does not work, we'll try something else. Or try it again a little bit higher, sometimes 100 meters. Uh, Make a huge uh, difference uh, in the mountains. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, that's very important. Of course, it's always uh, very important to have an access to at least to a good outlanding field, uh, especially with wind situation because when you have no wind, you can land on some fields easily. Uh, but if you have a strong winds, you have uh, downdrafts, you need more speed. And probably the wind, uh, you can have as well suddenly a tailwind where you expect uh, due to rotor activities. So that, that's very important. But these ridges uh, I call ridge to recover. And there are a lot of ridges here to recover, uh, to get back in the altitude. But for me, a recover ridge is one where I can land. That's I, a I very important point and I want to stress this. And so I'm going to go to Arambra. 
Yes. And what you can do next? So when you are when you are going, uh, you deciding to go to the south. Of course, for a real beginner, probably it's better to stay in the basin because when you're going to the south, you have to come back against the wind. <laughs> yes. It's always easy to go with the wind. But what we have here, this Arambre, let's say you make 1600 meters, then you can go behind the Arambre, where is the next ridge, the Mont Saint-Genis, or the bath tube, <laughs> say. Yes, it looks like a bath tube, that's yeah. why. And uh, so there you have a beautiful ridge, the western ridge, mm -hmm. the rest on the, on the western side, and then uh, you can fly on the northern side, on a wooden ridge, which is like that, it's, it's smooth, and usually when, when you have a ridge which is like that, bah, then you have turbulence zones mm -hmm. below. So you cannot uh, be quite low. If you have a smooth ridge, so the wind is going along and you, it's easy to take the energy okay. to climb. So that is the next step that you can do. We saw in the forecast from the measurement points, Montagne Chabre, which is the next south, a little bit south-southwest. It looks, it's really a stone which is going like a, like a wave. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's these 1100 meters, you should arrive at 1100 meters because if you are below, this is a more, more steep ridge, mm -hmm. if you are below then you have turbulent zones below and uh, probably it does not really work. Okay, so, yes. so it's important. Uh, that's the same thing if you cross uh, later than the valley of the Durance, south of Sisteron. There's a mountain, beautiful mountain, which is Gash and it's very flat in 1100 meters. Mm -hmm. So if you're 1150 meters and there are power lines going parallel, oh. if you if you are 50 meters higher, you get the lift without any problem. If you are flat in this flat run, you see the, uh, the, the power lines and uh, it's not very funny. So that's the huge difference between flatland flying and mountain flying. Yes. The 50 meters make a major difference. Yes and they decide whether you can continue the flight or if you will land out or have to go another way. Yeah. What, I, what I explained just before, so we are here, this is the Arambre, our mountain here where you can have the northern wind and usually you have a lift. If there's a, a little bit more western tendency, then sometimes I, I explained here the Montagne du Jour, this northwestern ridge works as well. It's a small part of the ridge. I think today it works, so 1600 meters you jump to the bathtub, Mont Saint-Genis. Uh, usually you have nice lifts here on the western side, but as well here on this northern side. Important not to fly too far because there is going nice downdrafts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this pass, the Col de Fay, it's called. So let's say 1600 meters here, same thing, a little bit more is always welcome, <laughs> not a problem. So here you will see the so-called bath club in Badewanne, which I was told you about, and I am here, and I already reached the cloud base, so I will continue with the route, and see how it goes, the wind is quite strong, over here you can see rain, and how small. The problem is, same as it goes up, it goes down. here, uh, measurements on the mountain from the paragliders. We saw that the wind is not so strong, so uh, pay a little bit of attention. When you are approaching here, let's say 12, 1300 meters, you are still local to the airfield of Sisteron. I consider that even with a low wind, we will have some thermals are pushed against 
the mountains and they are triggered so they that goes together thermals and the wind situation uh, situation goes together so from here if you want to continue to the south uh, you can usually cross here sometimes you find a little rotor system here it's huge downdraft here let's say 1700 1800 meters uh, sometimes you find a lift here in the middle in the, of the valley it's just you expect it because you expect a little rotor situation. Mm -hmm. It will not say it's a strong wave or whatever, but uh, all what happens in the dynamic system, you see it in small rivers. Mm -hmm. uh, in the creek, you can see, wow, uh, okay, this is behind the stone, you have this kind of rotor, you have uh, parts of laminar flow, you have lateral flows up above the stone, so these are things that are quite important to understand the systems. So here you can find sometimes a little rotor. If you can find, you can go here. The next ridge, it's called Lübeck. Here it's going down to Sisteron. And this is the Montagne Gasha I spoke about, where you can, uh, in 1100 meters, you have some power lines parallel here and 1500 meters crossing here. So it's important to know. Uh, so when you're a little bit lower than these 1100 meters or in this range, there is still a chance to get a lift. This is this small mm -hmm. ridge here and there you can even in 900 meters you can okay. find lifts. Then you make 1200 and you are, you are crossing With here. With the wind coming from north? Is the wind there is still coming still from north. Mm -hmm. Is there still a chance to come back to Sistero from here uh, if you're low? Yeah, you have, you have quite good outlanding fields if you are too low okay. and nothing works. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, but uh, I think this will work today. Uh, okay. It's not 100%. Uh, and if you see uh, you have more thermal situation, you make always a, a little balance between dynamic and thermals. You say, okay, the wind is stronger than 15 knots, uh, so 25, 26 kilometers per hour. You say, okay, the weight is a little bit, the balance is a little bit more to dynamic situation. If you have thermals, you look at the clouds. So what is important to know on this type of weather, sometimes people say uh, the wave does not work when there are thermals or the thermals do not work if they are wave or a strong wind. It's, it's wrong. It's <laughs> okay, wrong. so it's a myth. Because uh, what changes is the triggering of the lifts. Mm -hmm. So you imagine you have a thermal, I spoke about this little road alignment south of Montagne mm -hmm. Chavre. So, and uh, you have a thermal situation. So the thermal goes up, but it's triggered in a, a different way. For example, you have in the morning this rotor because the dynamic works in the morning, then there's a lift there. If you have thermals, they go always the easiest way. So the triggering is where the rotor is. Mm -hmm. Then you have suddenly thermals in the middle of the valley where you don't expect them normally. If you have a normal thermal situation, then you look on the southern side of the ridges where you have thermal, and suddenly the lift is here. Mm -hmm. And this is a mix-up between a rotor and th so the thermals are everywhere, but they are triggered in a different way. Huh? Okay. So you can have thermals, and in a typical wave situation, you have only thermals because the air mass with the northwestern wind is always very active, and then you have both thermals, but the triggering is different. That's important to understand. Okay, so I got here. Where would you say is the point of turnaround for me today uh, if I just want to make small steps? So uh, what you can do if you're going down, if you're taking a certain risk, yes. if you want to go down, but I think uh, it's okay with all the airfields that we have. We have Sisteron, we have saint -Aubin. So uh, from the dynamic point of view, you can take this and that. Let's say you can make some thermals a little bit higher, then you can go in the Montagne Lure as well. Mm -hmm. Here you find lifts usually, so that's a little bit collected. Uh, then you can start here. The light is coming in the opposite direction. Okay, lower than me. And I hope it's a time enough for us. you. I will just try your front important to know when you, you have a, a relatively high ridge, Montagne Lure, but you have small hills in front. Mm -hmm. So the small hills, they cover the ridge. So if you are too low on the ridge, if you are above the ridge or nearly above the ridge, uh, then you can surf here along. But these small little hills, they make as well some downdrafts. You are too low, then you have even downdrafts on the exposed ridge. Ah, okay. this, is, this is important to know. So uh, once again, look at a little river 
and you can really understand. You see the mountains are stones, and you see what well, that's flowing around. Okay, oh, here is a kind of rotor. Here is a laminar flow downdraft. So, uh, because in the water you can see it, it's mm -hmm. not exactly the same thing, but it's very similar, and it helps a lot. So here, here you can fly here along the ridge. Best is always you're a little bit above the ridge. Of course, you pay attention not to go to the wrong side. Yeah, so <laughs> always your correction angle. And then usually you can fly here. So uh, as I told in the briefing, it's a little bit tricky here because you see yeah. if you have a little bit Western component and here the ridges are very flat. And so there's something to la land here, but it's, it's not very comfortable. And the Mormon too, uh, when you have a little bit Western component, here sometimes you have downdrafts. Okay. Only on so the western side. In my yeah. opinion, I will stop here um, for the above first the day. Ridge, above the ridge. Exactly. So when you go there, when you go there, you can see, okay, the ridge works, the ridge works. Oh, it does not really work. Yeah. Mm. Okay, I'll so go back. I will probably try this one a few times and no, then I will you come can, back. You can do it, pay attention because yes. there are probably other gliders. <laughs> uh, but it's as well if you take the risk a little bit. So of course when you are going south of Mont Montagne Lure, then we have more flatlands. Look how high the cloud spaces are. If uh, there are thermals, then you can fly here. And it's eventually even possible to fly with thermals a little bit easier to the north because we have less winds here. Okay, probably. Yeah. Always forecast, <laughs> always check, always check. That's important yeah? because uh, sometimes people say, "Okay, forecast is like that." When I'm when I'm when I'm making my briefing or I make prepare a flight that could be a record flight or a simple flight, I look always about the weather, and I verify at any moment. I do that and verify. Oh, the, the wind is from the other direction. This is just observation and always checking. Is that right? Is my model right? Because probably it does not work. And if you have five or six or seven times, uh, you don't find the lift that can be in the flatlands on the on the western side of the cloud or the northern side. Mm. And you see, it does not work. Then your model is wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, probably. Yeah. And uh, so that's it's very important. So if I have a, a indication of southwestern wind uh, and I have the small smoke, it's, no, it's coming from the north. So what's going wrong? Something is different mm -hmm. than forecasts. Forecasts are forecasts, reality is sometimes very okay. different. So this is a possibility. You can fly as well to the to the airfield of Santa Bon. There's the Hinkelsteine as we call them, this kind of pyramid stones. And this is the ridge where you can fly. But you can get stuck as well. <laughs> <laughs> so if you see there are thermos high enough, nice cumulus clouds we see outside, it's, it's not so bad. Uh, and you see as well in these eastern areas, Nice cumulus clouds are there, fly cumulus clouds. Look up, okay. yeah, if you're low, you look always like, is the system. wind stronger? Is there a chance to get okay. some ridges like that? There you can wait as well sometimes. Yeah? There are as well small ridges here in the valley. So I consider that there will be probably a thermal situation here. And the more you go to the west, the more you have a chance to find more dynamic lifts. Mm -hmm. so let's say you are here. Uh, I spoke about this ridge. This is the Vaumus. So east of saint Bon airfield. And there's more thermals because the wind will probably be parallel. But once you cross here, then you can find lifts. You make some lifts, tuck, 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 go here. And then this is the Autant. It's a, a steep wall and there is often thermals then and from here you can jump here on the northern side of Montagne Gash. You make before. maximum altitude and coming back from here, let's say we are speaking about dynamics, huh? yeah. so you are flying more or less to the airfield of the Sisteron and then you make a little flight here and you go on okay. the north of Flava. Okay. Yeah, not directly yeah. because you have huge downdrafts. Okay, here. I understand. Yeah. yeah. So when you have 2,000 meters with the Thunder Class glider, LS4 is a beautiful glider, then uh, there's a good chance that you can get the ridge. Once again, uh, here a little bit more to the west because you have the situation when you have a, a ridge which is going down, then the wind is following a little bit. <laughs> so and you have downdrafts where you probably expect. If you have northeastern wind, of course, then this low ridge can work, 
but if you have more western wind component, uh, then here's the wind is parallel, it's going down. Okay. So you need to go from this point where you have mm -hmm. the rock starts. Here's a wooden hill and there the rock starts and there's the 1100 meters if you are there. And even in the evenings, the ridge is nice in the sunshine. Sometimes you have a mix up between dynamic and the thermals. Okay. And from here, let's say 1800 meters, usually you can climb in the dynamics. Then you go a little bit in the middle of the valley. You have a small pyramid here. It's not so good to see. And you turn around this thing a little bit from here to go then to this western ah, yes, bridge. Okay. If you make it too direct, you will have the downdraft. Mm -hmm. So this is always how to go a little bit to the turn around. You have not this big downdraft. And as well here, 1100 meters is a good altitude. If you are below, then you have these small hill feet and uh, <laughs> it's not good. Huh? Okay. So, but here you can land a little bit everywhere. And then go back to Arabra. And then you go back to here, at first to go here, yeah. and then you fly in the middle here. You go here to the Arambra, make some altitude. Let's say it's a little bit late in the evening, and you can fly above the airfield of Aspra. There's kind of rotor just trying. And sometimes you find, I, I expect wave uh, probably more and better than that they have in the forecast. Okay. No? Okay. So the wind, as I told you, you have this kind of venturi, you have these mountains, you have this, and the wind is always stronger here. And due to these higher mountains, it turns a little bit to northeast. And that is the reason that you have wave here and you have wave here around. Mm -hmm. yeah, because the wind is here and you are astonished that you find a wave parallel to the wind. We have always to see that in uh, the books, most of the time, you have two-dimensional... Uh, yeah, it's on paper. Uh, and it's paper, and the reality is like in the small creek, in the small uh, bach of water, and there you can see it's like here. So mm -hmm. you have a lot of possibilities how the wind field does work, and you have vertical exchange due to the rotor elements. So it's, it's a lot of things, but uh, look, when you are flying in the flatlands and you have dry thermals, you don't know was the lift there half an hour before or 10 minutes ago and it's finished. You don't know. So, so it's much more a fine structure from the thermal point of view. We have a little bit wind and you have forest. So uh, there are a lot of things. And I think uh, really once you understand how it works in the mountains, it's easier to fly in the mountains. Yes, I've heard it a it's lot. It's more clear. It's it's more <laughs> it clear. Follows rules. At the beginning, of course, everybody is a little bit more lost. Mm -hmm. Is there a navigation problem? Uh, the problem. GPS. The GPS says you can go there, but there's mm -hmm. a wall between, <laughs> <laughs> and so on. No? But I think if you if you are playing around here, uh, you make the decision in function of the thermals here. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be possible that you find nice thermals, and then it's better. But always. If you have thermals, you look up. If you are low, look wind and triggering yeah. of thermals. Yeah. So that's a little bit the idea. And uh, in, the, the, in the evening, if you like to fly a little bit longer, uh, you can really try, that is very interesting to learn. So you take the Aramra, you can fly it to this northwestern ridge. Uh, you, let's say 1200 meters, you are still local to the airfield. Uh, you ju just make the northern ridge, you can eventually jump to the Montagne Dool. Yeah, this is a small pyramid mm -hmm. on the northwestern side, trying to. Uh, so you can go as well from here against the to the north and trying above the airfield. Ah, there's a rotor, you know, just to feel and to understand how this uh, situation works. And this is beautiful to learn. So uh, I'm often playing in the evening here in this area. And then uh, you try here, and sometimes you can go here, and it's even possible sometimes to fly here in, in waves with 3,000 meters. It just, uh, it's probably not for today. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I will do that another day. But thank you so much for yeah. your insight, and I'll see what I can do, and yeah, I will let you know how it went. <laughs> thank you, Klaus. I'm happy to show you all these things, <laughs> because gliding is too nice to make it alone. Yes, that's true. <laughs> you have to share.
<laughs> so we're gonna go to the plane and get ready for flight and I'll see you down in the grid. Oh, my God.